Hey, it's Kristen. We're back again with another episode of Find the Facts, a series where we talk to actual experts to get real information on things that we may have been taught wrong and where we also learn about things that we don't know but should. So today's topic is something that's been pretty controversial over the years. So we are going to get the facts when it comes to spanking for punishment in children. This should be interesting. Spanking changes how a kid's brain develops from a very young age, and it makes the brain look more like the brains of kids who have been severely abused. We know that's not a good thing because they tend to be more fearful, more hypervigilant, more anxious, and they tend to show signs of post-traumatic stress disorder. That's not what we want for our kids, and that's not generally our goal when we spank our kids. But knowing that even mild spanking can lead possibly to a brain fundamental structural response pattern that looks like an abuse kid, why do it? It's not worth it. There's so many, so many ways that spanking negatively affects children. You know, they're less likely to trust their caregivers. They're more likely to be sneaky about their misbehaviors and hide their problems from their caregivers when they're older because they don't want to get in trouble or get punished. They're more likely to change their behavior based on not getting punished rather than understanding the impacts of their actions on others and changing their behaviors due to empathy or you know moralistic standards. They're more likely to misperceive and neutral interpersonal stimuli as threatening and act out defensively, especially during adolescence when that brain is kind of on fire. Um, they're less likely to be good problem solvers because hiding and avoiding are the primary uh, mechanisms that are motivating behavior and behavior change. They tend to struggle with interpersonal conflict resolution using words, and also they're more likely to perpetuate this cycle and spank their own kids rather than learning alternative parenting strategies. You can't talk about spanking without talking about generational trauma and our species history of brutality against each other's bodies. As humans, that's one of the ways that we have always known to problem solve. And as we have evolved and matured and like found different ways of problem solving, it's become less and less acceptable. Think about all the things that were normalized to do and we used to do these things, but we stopped now that we learned more and we know better. Like seatbelts were not a thing for a really long time and you know, GM was hesitant to put them in cars because it was more expensive. It was normal to smoke cigarettes during pregnancy. It was normal to drink alcohol during pregnancy. Um, and so just because some people turned out fine doesn't mean that all or even most kids turn out fine. And then, you know, the ones who are fine, what does fine look like? So there are so many adults who, you know, are able to hold down jobs and be in relationships, but then they also struggle with relational aggression. They don't know how to solve problems with each other. They're defensive, they're reactive, they're hostile and volatile. There are so many adults who struggle with emotional communication and articulation, and they may also numb their emotional experiences with substances or process addiction. So what exactly are we talking about when we say you know, things are fine? So many people have this crippling sense of insecurity, self-loathing, and shame, and it's really masked through refusal to take healthy risks or through narcissism. So. You know, fine seems like a low bar. Let's raise our kids to thrive. What would you say is the best way to discipline um, in terms of like not spanking, obviously, mm -hmm. but like if you're just sticking them in timeout, are you still not having that communicative thing mm -hmm. to where they're understanding why they're in trouble? Timeout is such a controversial method as well. There's a lot of parenting professionals who would not recommend the use of timeout at this point. Um, I mean, I think timeout is better than spanking. But I mean, if you are going to use timeout, the debrief is so important where, you know, once they come out, you, you talk about what happened, what, what are some ways to make better choices. More broadly in terms of alternative strategies for, you know, disciplining and guiding children, um, natural and logical consequences that are related to the misbehavior make the most sense, especially for children who have not experienced any trauma histories. Um, and I say that because kids who have experienced trauma, um, their environment hasn't been rational or logical. So they're they're less likely to respond to that. And that's a whole nother 
on right. the worms. With young children, especially like kids under four, the majority of misbehavior um, comes from unmet needs and difficulty communicating and expressing themselves. Every single behavior has a function. So figuring out what the function of the behavior is for the kids. Is it, is it sensory? Is it attention seeking? Do they want something? Um, and do they want to escape or avoid something? You know, that also helps um, parents and caregivers figure out how to best respond. And in general, kids don't learn as much from punishment um, other than fear, avoidance, resentment. And they learn a lot more from, you know, proactive teachings and developing the language to problem solve, talk things out and make amends. In an instance, like let's say, you know, you always hear about the kid in the store that's throwing the tantrum, maybe struggling with like a very, you know, verbal, vocal, difficult child. And mm -hmm. they're like, well, spanking's the only way I can get them to be quiet and like pay attention. Um, what message do you have for like those parents? When we are in those like kind of fight flight, instances i mean we're activated we're triggered and what is you know just a neurobiological fact is when we can know like all the best parenting strategies in the in the book but then when we are activated like that we will respond in the way that we were templated so how we were responded to so if we were hit in that situation it will be reflexive to just okay spank the child shut them up and move along um, so maybe it works temporarily, but we're, you know, raising kids is a long term game. And, you know, if you really think about what you want to achieve in the long term, yeah, maybe it's embarrassing to have your kids screaming, they hate you and making the scene. But ultimately, if they're trying to get that toy and you get through that trip and they don't get that toy and they don't get to escape the situation by making your trip shorter. Yes, it's a humiliating, embarrassing, hard. But then next time, they're a lot less likely to throw that um, that fit. And or, you know, before you even go into the store, having a proactive conversation goes a long way. OK, you can pick one thing under five dollars and you get it if you have a good trip when we get out of the store. Otherwise, you don't get it. And so they have expectations. They know what they're earning. They know what they what, what they should do. And so you're less likely to be dealing with more of these reactive scenarios. And in terms of disciplining, then you're saying that it's not going to, you know, affect them like in the same way spanking would be if you're like, OK, I'm taking away, you know, your favorite toy for today. Here's why. Right. Because mm -hmm, mm -hmm. they're not they're not reacting based on fear. They're not, you know, like it's not going to be physically painful and aversive to them. The last thing I do want to comment on is that, you know, so many people of color, communities of color use spanking as part of what they deem you know, cultural. And I think we confuse what's cultural with what's generational trauma. And just because it's something that was used on our people and, you know, these are communities that have been enslaved and oppressed and colonized and like that's what was that was the most common method of keeping people in line and that gets passed down through the body through generations and so we confuse it and think that oh it's culture but just because this happened to us doesn't mean we never repeat it to our kids it's not culture it's trauma and that is a lot more rampant in communities of color because of you know global systems of oppression. I feel like I just learned so much in such a short period of time and it was super helpful for me as a parent and as someone who might have another kid. And I hope the information was helpful for you too. Anyway, we do this series every week. So if you have a topic that you want more information on, something you saw on the internet that you want debunked, message me at Call Me Krista Torres and I'll do my best to find an expert who can get the answers for us.